Hey everyone, it's Nick Marzinski from TrappingLight.com and today I'm going to be finishing out the project on my face splattering. So let's get right to it. Now, when I left off at the last tutorial, I copied my layers twice and shifted one of them over using the Move tool, which is this lower layer right here. Then I applied the Liquify filter to another layer to create this top layer, which is actually a pretty good representation of what I look like when I have a migraine headache. But I digress. What I want to do now is put black layer masks on both of these layers, which will hide the layer. Remember, when it comes to layer masks, white reveals and black conceals, so I want a black layer mask because I want to hide the layer. Here's the issue. If I press the Add Layer Mask button at the bottom of the Layers palette, which looks a little like a box with a circle in it, I get a white layer mask. You can see it right up here. Now that's not what I want. The layer is not hidden because the layer mask is white. That's not what I want. I wanted a black layer mask. Okay. So let's undo that in the history palette. What I'm going to do this time when I click the Add Layer Mask button is I'm going to hold down the Alt key or the Option key if you're on a Mac while I press that Add Layer Mask button. And what it does, and that's the layer underneath, is that it adds black layer masks. And so you can see both of my top layers here are now hidden behind black layer masks. Now that that's done, what I want to do is create the splatter effect by actually painting with white to reveal these underlying layers using splatter brushes. But the problem is, is that Photoshop doesn't come with any good preloaded splatter brushes, so I've actually got to go and get some. Now, I could make my own, and in an earlier project, which can be found on my website at trappinglight.com, that's exactly what I did. But in this case, I want some brushes that look like nasty, gritty blood splatters. So what can I do? Well, what I like to do generally when I'm faced with a problem like this is to try and find them online. And when I'm looking for brushes or other things to use within Photoshop, one of the websites that I like to visit is deviantart.com. And this is the splash page for it right here. Okay, if I type in splatter brushes, and you can see it's right there, into the search bar up at the top, and click the button, it brings up a whole bunch of brushes that users on this website have made available for download uh, that you can use within Photoshop, particularly the ones that say in Photoshop brushes right here. You can see a few that are Paint Shop Pro or GIMP. I generally try and stick with the Photoshop brushes and there's a few things that I'm looking for when I'm looking at brushes from this site. The first thing is that I want them to be high resolution. I want them to be over a thousand pixels in size. With brushes I can always make them smaller but I can't make them bigger without introducing any sort of artifacts that I don't like to see within a brush. So I want them as big as I can so that if I need them smaller, I can always make them smaller. Also, I like to download sets. I don't want to download a single brush at a time, so I look for sets. This one, for example, is 50 blood or splatter brushes. Lovely. Um, but in order to do that, in order to download them, what I do is I just click on this download file, which downloads an ABR file. That's how brushes are stored within Photoshop. They're stored as ABR files. Okay, So I would download this, click on the zip file, and that opens it within Photoshop. And you would see the brushes that I downloaded within my brush palette. Here's the issue. In order for that to work, I need to make sure that Photoshop is closed first. Okay, Photoshop loads its brushes at startup. So if I have Photoshop open and then try and load the brushes that I've downloaded, they may not appear. What I need to do is close Photoshop making sure to save my work first and then click on that ABR file in order to load it. It will automatically open up Photoshop and my brushes should be in the brush palette. Okay, there's one other thing that I want to point out about brushes on this site. Also, one of the things that I really like is to find brushes that are free and there's a lot of them that are free, but some of them come with user restrictions. You can't use them on commercial art, for example, or you can't use them without giving credit to the artist on commercial art. So be very careful that you know with know what you're downloading. Again, free brushes are great, but make sure that you're okay with the user um, restrictions that the creators placed on that. Just something to be mindful of. So let's hop back into Photoshop. Now, that I'm back in Photoshop, I'm going to open two more palettes, two new palettes. In order to do that, I'm going to go up to Windows and I'm going to select the two, which is the Brush Palette right here, and then the Brush Presets Palette, which is already opened up. They usually open up as two, uh, two different palettes. I can just drag them together like this, and now I've got tabbed palettes right here. In addition, sometimes they open up in the middle of your screen like this. In that case, I just simply put them together and then drag them over to the side to dock them right here. Now, this uses up a lot of real estate on my screen. My image is kind of small, but 
at this point I've got everything that I need on the screen. I've got my brush instrumentation here with the, pal the presets and the brush palette. I've also got my layers palettes here as well so I can use all of that when I'm doing this. Now what I'm going to do is go to the bottom of my brush presets palette right here and you can see that when I scroll down all of these splatter brushes that I have are downloaded right into the palette. Here's a 2500 pixel brush, there's several of those, there's a 500 pixel brush, there's a 100 pixel brush. So I've got several to choose from based off of what I've downloaded from the site. So I'm going to start off by selecting a 2500 pixel brush. All I have to do is single click on it to select it, make sure that my brush tool is selected by pressing B, and then drag it over to the center. It is too big, so I'm going to have to resize it using the left bracket painting on a layer mask. So again, I'm going to want to be painting with the foreground color of white to reveal the underlying layer. I click on this layer mask here, and then I can just simply, using this brush, click and click and click and click, and you can see that it's revealing the layer underneath. At this point, I should probably mention that there's some artistry that's involved here. Simply creating splatters like I've done here really isn't going to cut it. What I'm looking for is splatters that appear as though my face is actually exploding outward. I know, it's a lovely thought. I really hope that you're not watching this tutorial over dinner. But in order to create that effect, I'm going to have to use, I'm going to have to actually rotate my brushes into place so that I get an effect that I like. In this case, I'm going to key again. I'm going to go into the brush palette up here by selecting this um, this drop down right there or this um, tab right there. I've got this spinner tool here which I can use if you look at this preview box right here I can use to spin my brush around. So I'm going to spin my brush around to get it to an orientation that I like, put it into place and then click the button and you can see right there it's creating the splatter that's kind of coming downward. Again I can go over towards the top of my head right up here and do the same thing and kind of vary it and vary the size of my brush a little bit in order to make it not be so apparent that I'm just simply using the same brush. Now, using the spinner, the angles that you're going to set are dependent on what kind of brush you're using. So it's really a matter of trial and error. And I play around a lot at this point. Um, I use my history palette a lot to do undos. And I swap layers in the stack and do all that sort of thing, painting on layer masks, um, just to try and get an effect that I'm happy with. Okay. The other thing that you should do is you should change brushes periodically. Again, if you use the same and then rotate it to an orientation that I'm happy with. And this is probably the same brush that I just selected. So let's try a different one. Let's try that one. And that looks pretty good. Uh, you're going to want to stay away from using the same brush over and over again because it'll be obvious even if you tilt it and move it around. So change brushes periodically. That's what I spoke to when I said downloading sets is nice because then you've got a lot of brushes to work from. You just don't simply have one. Now, one of the things, the other things that, that comes up is that what I want to do is I really also want to stay away from my eyes and nose. So here I've kind of gone overboard. I've hidden my left eye and part of my nose and I really don't like the way that that looks okay um, what I want to do if that happens is then go up to my circular brush this is a regular soft circular brush resize it and then paint over this layer mask in black to hide it again so I just switch my foreground color to black and then paint over it to reveal that layer underneath and again I'm doing this because I want the original features of my face my eye and my um, nose and mouth to still be there even though the side of my face is kind of exploding outward. And this really comes back to the idea of aesthetic considerations. Images like this look chaotic but there's actually a lot of consideration that goes into how that effect looks, okay? Particularly for the ones that are any good. So this is the part where I'm creating this splatter that I'm really agonizing over whether or not it looks realistic, it looks good, it looks like something that um, that um, sells the image, sells the, 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 the kind of effect that I'm, that I'm really interested in and looking for. So it's not just a matter of just 
throwing a whole bunch of splatters on here and going, okay, great, it looks like I've made splatters. It's actually a matter of really being very careful with how your brush looks and, and the kind of effect that it's doing and, and being very deliberate about the kind of effects that you're creating. And again, going back and undoing things as you make mistakes and making sure that the effect that you have in the end is something that you're happy with. One of the other things that I do like to do is also go over these masks that I have selected and actually paint on them occasionally with a little bit of black to just simply go through and it's easier to see on this one here to really grit up some of the splatter that I've created to make it look even more raw than it than it did right from the start and it there it's again a bit of a minor effect but it really goes a long way to sort of sell what you're um, what you're trying to accomplish with the splatter effect and I'm gonna just paint over this section here where it's just a little bit too close to my eye and a little bit too close to my nose right there just to simply get rid of it okay there's one other thing that I want to do and that's that I want to add something on this side of my face to make it look like it's disintegrating here and the easiest way to do that is with a solid color layer so I'm gonna to go to my uh, add adjustment layer button down here which is that half moon uh, icon at the bottom of the layers palette click solid color and the solid color that I want to add is white okay now again it's given me a white layer mask, which is not what I want. I actually want a black layer mask. And so in order to change it, once the layer mask is selected, I can just simply hit Control I or Command I on a Mac, and that inverts the layer mask and turns it to black. Now I'm going to take this white layer, and I'm going to actually drag it below my other two layers that I've created, my offset layer and then my liquify layer. What I'm going to do on this layer is I'm going to take some additional splatters and let's choose some that are just sort of look like that. And I'm just going to simply go through and paint on this layer mask again with white to reveal it. And that's a very low opacity brush. Let's try that one. No, that one doesn't look much better either. How about you? And rotate these to make it look like part of my face here, and this actually looks pretty good, is actually sort of falling apart. So again, all it's doing is it's simply adding some of the white to make it look like there's some disintegration that's occurring on this side of my face, whereas the rest of my face out here is exploding outward. Now I'm going really, really kind of fast, and when I do this, uh, in 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 real where I'm actually doing it myself in Photoshop without recording a tutorial I'm actually going a lot slower I'm being very very deliberate in this case I'm going quick just to simply show you how these effects are done without really going crazy trying to get them to be perfect but that's the process that I go through to create this effect once this effect is done and at this point I'm gonna say it's done even though if I were actually doing it for real I would be continuing to finesse it what I'm going to do is there's one final effect that I'm going to add, and that's a high pass sharpen. It just sort of really brings all the details out and, and makes them pop just a little bit more than they do. In order to do that, I'm going to need to create a new layer which incorporates all of the edits below it. To do that, I hit Control, Shift, Alt, and E, or Command, Shift, Option, and E on a Mac. And that creates this new layer up here. I'm going to label it high pass. And I'm going to add a high pass filter. So I'm going to go up to filter up here on the top menu, go to other, go to high pass. Now the high pass filter is one that's easy to um, overdo. So if you slide it all the way to the right here, this, for example, here is overdone. Where I like to keep my radius is someplace low, somewhere between about two and five pixels. I don't want to go crazy with it because if you go nuts with the high pass sharp and you start introducing all sorts of halos and other things that you don't necessarily want. And you can see even at three, I'm starting to get a little bit of haloing right here at the neck. So I may want to take that down just a little bit. Two nine, I'll say three is fine. Then click OK. Now, right now this looks pretty bad, but here's the magic trick with a high pass filter you take the blend mode and you set it to overlay and what that does again is it just kind of gives an edge to the image here's the high pass on off and on you can see how it accentuates my eye it accentuates the hair up there 
Okay, so that's really about it for this project. That's the end of the project. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube channel or on my website at trappinglight.com. Over the next few weeks, I'll be putting together another one of these projects and tutorials, so watch the website, watch the YouTube channel for additional material. In the meantime, my name is Nick Marzinski with trappinglight.com. Have a great week, everybody.